Okay, good morning. It's uh, it's been it's the next weekend. I uh, I got a little sidetracked putting in a cutter head in my planer. There'll be a video of that. Um, this was first cut of lacquer on these red samples, and my spraying technique is terrible because there's oh I got one side without a run. Everything else got sags and runs. This side doesn't have hardly any finish on it, which is probably why it didn't run. But, uh, so we're gonna, I got some 220, and I'm just gonna try to s smooth these things out. And get I think I'm gonna chalk these up as not quite good enough. Yeah, where it's a little too, um, pink. But the one that got kind of close, was some reddish brown in it. Yeah, we got a little reddish brown in it and it started to get close. Oops, dropping stuff. Okay. Three drops of red. One, two, three. So we're getting to a two thirds mix instead of a 50, two, a two to one. Two drops, one, two. And I'm gonna mask off my my area, my number two area. <laughs> I'm gonna mask off my number, never mind. That was bad, that was terrible. I should be ashamed. I'm not, but I should be. All right, now we are masked off. Ready to apply some cooler. All right, here we go. I think it's a, it's a redder look with some brown to it. So I'm already, I'm already digging this. I'm gonna leave that to uh, dry a bit. I'm gonna set you guys up with a better angle though. Well, okay, so this is a different angle. I'm not sure how much better it'll be. We'll find out. Um, I might put my shoulder in the way from time to time. We'll see. Um, so that was, that was a really nice red, actually. Um, I gotta make a note before I forget. That was, number one was three red, two reddish brown. The next one I'm just going to add, so it's just going to be number two is one plus one more reddish brown. Pretty sure that isn't what I wanted. Might have either been too much blue or just the any blue was too much. Yeah, we're gonna do another. I'm gonna do another sample because I think the I think the reddish brown was the right target. I think the mahogany probably wasn't. The I, right when I got to that blue, right before I put that blue in, I felt like I was headed in the right direction. So we're gonna go back to. 50-50 red and reddish mahogany, reddish brown, and black, because that got me very close. I'm gonna, I'm not quite ready to give up on blue just yet. Um, I think I've got one more blue test in me. I think I've got to do this with 
fresher. I'm, I'm narrowing in on things and I'm starting to get to where I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to start using more fresh uh, alcohol mix. Because this start with an ounce, spray a little, lose the ounce and mess with my concentration thing, I think is probably the last mile, that last few bits. So we're going to go to a one and two, three and four. Uh, that was one and two, this is three, this is four. Number one. And just keep marking these out because this helps. We've got three red. Three reddish brown. And I'm going to put in, I think, yeah, shit. I might as well just try a blue in this. Just a blue, because before it was blue and black, and I think it got a little too dark. <clears throat> now I've got a fuller concentration. So I'm just, this is my last hope of getting blue, of making use of blue. And I don't even know if I need it, but I just want to try it. I keep thinking I want something with a little tinge of that purple to it. And as I look over at the, at the one over there drawing, I see it from this distance. It looks really close off but it's close so I want to I want to give it all the chance I can with that blue just in case because I'd hate to be like you know it's it's that hunting for gold and you dig right past it and don't realize that it's right there kind of thing and I don't want to do that so now we can try this I'm going to do the blue test first I have a feeling it's going to be wrong and I'm not going to like it but we'll see think at this point, because we are messing with those ratios enough that maybe that's my, maybe I'm kidding myself in thinking that it's not, and it is. Yeah, that's, that is really, really close. I think I'm going to, just bump all of them up. I think that's a, I think that's one of the things I want to try is just elevate the entire mixture so there's more per ounce of this color because I think I love this color but I want it to bump up just a bit I don't know what that's going to do actually I don't know if that's going to be any good I like that one a little bit better though. So what I'm going to do now, I think, yeah, I think that, that broke over the purple line a little too far. Let's let that dry and see what that does. But I'm going to try, what am I going to try? That's very close. I think we want to go that but darker. I think we need to go back to this ratio with a little black in it. But one of the things I will do now is I'm going to add a little more of that reddish brown and red to this and do another set. So it's now that's it's three three it's four four two. It's about to become five five two. We're going to try to add a bit of black to this, just a partial drop of black to this, and see what happens. Because I think I'm liking that. I just want it a little darker. Now, I think the 
black was a mistake. It's maroon now, which, yes, I did say I was headed for that. Maybe it's not bad. Got to stop taking a judgment of the color while it's wet, though, because it's not going to look that way. Yeah, I'm going to let those dry. And uh, I think it's time to put some top coats on some stuff and see what they really turned into. So that. Wow, man. Lacquer. Whoa. Okay, well, it. <laughs> Okay, so it's been about, gosh, seven hours, six hours. And my first coat has been allowed to dry. Very, very thin coat, so it's not really there. I'm going to put another coat on. But the good side, there ain't no runs in it, which is important. So we're going to just lay down one more coat. Basically, this is my only chance with this spray can of lacquer. It's about half gone now. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna lay down more coats here and get things get things good and sealed so I can get a better view of the final color. So I'm gonna turn off me audio because I'm gonna be under under the respirator because it's hard to hear me under this. So here we go. Ow, that was hard. Okay, so the lacquer on those top coats has dried. I've kept, I've kind of culled out the ones that I liked after the top coat went on. And it's kind of in, yeah, it's kind of in these, between these two here, or potentially this one as well. So you guys will probably have a very hard time seeing what's going on here. So I'll start with, yeah, we'll start with, yeah, we'll start with this one. So this was the second one I had done. It's, uh, it started out as just red with a little reddish brown, and it was too Jolly Rancher. We added equal, this is 50-50 red, reddish brown and red, so it's three drops of red, three drops of reddish brown. And it's very close, it's reddish. It's redder, it's got a little brown to it. Um, it's lacking a darkness. So then I added black. This is one drop of black added to that. So it's three red, three reddish brown, and a black. And that definitely darkened it. And it's got a little reddish, it's more red toned. Then this other one is kind of that same deal, except, in, except for black, I added a drop of blue instead. So it's three reddish brown, three red, and one blue. And so these two come very, very close to what I'm after. I want them a bit, a bit more reddish, I think. And I think I like this one in the right light. I think I like this top one most um, for its reddishness, which it's kind of putting me back in the, I think I can rule out the blue here. If I need the blue, maybe the maybe the blue from the the curl, the sanded back of the blue would look great. Um, so at this point, we are at very very critical dialing in, and so this one is reddish brown, 50% reddish brown, or well, sorry, three drops of red, three drops of reddish brown, and a drop of black. What I think I would like to do is add a little red to this, and see what happens. Oh. See, I keep looking at, I keep looking at this one, and it's got a richness to it that I like. But I know that if I added more blue, it would just get to purple. Or if I added black, it would just get this color, and I don't want that. And I kind of want it a bit stronger red, a stronger red to me. It's weird because every day I look at this, I get a different desire. <laughs> it's kind of a pain. This whole color finding thing. See, I kind of want to get closer to the true red, where it's not, uh, where it's not Jolly Rancher looking. But 
more reddish red. So I'm thinking I'm going to add a little more red to this, to one of these. I just pick one. I'm going to go with the blue one because I think, I think if I added red to it, things will do differently than the darkness of the black. I think this will get me closer to the Jolly Rancher and I'm not sure I want that. Yeah, so we're going to go with this. I'm going to start three red, three brown, reddish brown, a blue, and I'm going to go with another red and see what happens. So we've got, we've got some more of this to do. Okay, so that one, even without a top coat on it, feels like it's in the right direction. Very much so. I think that's the one. I think it might be it. But we're going to elevate our way towards it. We're going to do a... I'm going to add a drop of reddish brown. This is the one I think we've nailed it on. This one is awesome. This one, this one jumps out at me. Every time I glance at it, I go, oh, that's the color. So I think I, think I found my, my tint. I'm not sure how well, if you can see the difference between those two colors. They're, it's a subtle difference. This one's a little Jolly Rancher. This one's rich. Yeah, I really like that color. That one is this one plus one more red. This one has five, six, one, two, three, four. Five, six red, four red and reddish browns, and one blue. Very little blue, six reds, and four reddish browns. And it's just, that reddish brown is bringing up the, the richness. And the blue is giving me that slight maroon tint, which is what I'm after. Not maroonish, not maroon, but kind of maroon. More, there's a little violet to it, and you can t sort of tell it. It's very subtle, which is exactly what I want. Okay, we're set up now for reproducing what I think is the nailed color. The color that is it. It is the color. Um, so we'll start out with our typical ounce of alcohol here. And then we'll to it we are. So if I've got this counting right, it was I started with four red, added uh, another one at step three and another one at step four. So that's six reds. I had started with four, three are uh, reddish browns, added one, and then a blue. So it's six reds, four reddish browns, one blue. So. This, these gloves are starting to look weird. Interesting. So we are. Recipe, I'm going to call this, I'm doing this, it's funny, red recipe number one. All the other ones were nothing. This was to arrive at it is six drops of red, four drops of reddish brown. And one drop of blue per ounce. Okay. So there's our ounce of alcohol. Six red. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, almost got a seventh in there, but it made it on the side, so that's good. Six drops of red, if you please. Okay. I'll clean that up. Red is really red. That is some red red right there. Okay. That was six drops of red. Four drops of reddish brown, if you please. One, two, three, four. No more. Okay. And for added measure, one drop. One 
drop of blue. One drop of blue, no more. Some really blue blue as well. Blue blue. Okay, so if I did this right, and this is pretty much what I'm doing here, is making sure what I think is my recipe turns out to actually be my recipe. Give it a nice stir. So what this one, this was what we were talking about yesterday or last time at the beginning. I think we got the description of this. This is not even close to what I was aiming for. You see here, it's much redder this one this one's much darker red this is really close to kind of what I'm after at the end when I've laid the dark grain down the dark grain filling down so that was just a case of this recipe was number four in a quarter ounce and I was trying to do partial dots and it or drops and it just wasn't I didn't estimate it obviously I didn't estimate it right so this this formula was what I thought to be this formula which was six red four reddish brown and a blue and that wasn't quite right. This was at the end of a quarter of an ounce that was modified a few times and it just didn't turn out. My guessing of partial drops wasn't good. So this one wasn't quite right. It's very nice. It's a very good red. I like it. And like I said, it's pretty close to what I'd kind of like to end up at at the very end with the grain popping and whatnot. But so I'm trying to recreate that similar thing. I'm going to try to tweak it, just get a little redder. It's a little too burgundy here. I know I'm kind of teetering between this burgundy and this red thing, but it's, I'm trying to keep from getting Jolly Rancher look and also try to keep from getting too dark and obscuring things. So that six red, four reddish brown and one blue, my intention to do the next one, another test was to do six red, three reddish brown to knock this darkness down a little bit and a blue. But when I was mixing it into that ounce, I accidentally got seven red in there. So I've decided I'll try seven red, four reddish brown and one blue. And that's where we get this and it's still drying. It's a little pinky. Um, I'm gonna give it some more and see if it just needed another coat here. I laid it on a lot thinner this time, I think, than the last one. No, that's about right. That's saturated enough. Yeah, it's not much different. So that is definitely redder than this. This is more burgundy, but this might work out. This might be the one that works with some darker some grain darkening on it so we're gonna let this dry and then we'll see where where things land uh, we got about 20 minutes before part 24 i think it's part 24 posts this will be like part 31 maybe part 30 so we're starting to catch up with me because i've been taking a lot of time on this but i need to take the time on this because it's it needs to be done right yeah that didn't turn out as burgundy or as purpley as i was expecting it to last week so that's a pretty good one it's kind of interesting that adding the red did that, did what it did, but I'm going to leave this. We'll try to get some top coat on it. I've, I've run, I'm very low on the gloss lacquer that I've been trying for top coat here, but I've got a satin one that might be all right. Um, I just want to get something over the top of this that kind of simulates what it's going to be when I finish it. But this is, finishing is voodoo, color matching, color finding, and this is truly just, I'm trying to find the color in my brain and... That's, that's, that's tricky to find anything in there, but um, yeah, this was very close though. I'm, I'm actually very close to leaning towards this one. The trouble is, is I think this is going to be too dark once I get the darkening into the curly grain. So we're going to let this one dry up. We'll put a little top coat on it and see how this slightly more red version turns out. Okay, so I had just enough top coat left. This was the previous attempt to recreate the color. It was just that way too red, or way too, way too um, maroon burgundy. It was just a bit beyond the red I was shooting for. This, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I definitely can. It was that, which is a little purpley bur bur burgundy-ish looking, to that, which is a little redder. This is my color. Right here, I think. This is where I'm going to start from once I finally get the dark bits going. Going. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so <clears throat> we are now, I think, at the point where I want to 
start going back towards my dark colors for grain popping. Here I'm going to mix up a, um, a good sized batch, a two ounce batch of my red that I like, that I have decided is the red that I like, and then spray all of those, the red that I want. So that'll be my first one. I'm going to mix up an ounce <clears throat> of black, probably six drops of black in an ounce. That's a fair bit of black. Uh, and then and then I'll do a uh, pair of coats. I'm going to use it all up. I'll, use a, I'll do a coat and I'll let it sit. I'm also curious about a uh, a wash a wash coat of alcohol before the color goes on. I'm curious to see how that does because um, truly the black does make the most sense. The black is when you want to darken a color you add black to it. Um, so that has the most sense and I just want to make it get as much penetration in it as possible. So we're going to do six drops of black here. One, two, three, four, five. Lightning on the surface. I don't know. This is this is probably complete BS for all I know. Um, I'm trying stuff here. It's just an experiment at this point. I'm gonna leave that one for a bit. I'm gonna take another one and throw some boiled linseed oil on it. So I'm gonna call that enough for those coats. We're gonna go lay this out in the sun to dry. Never leave boiled linseed oil balled up in a rag anywhere. It can, uh, it can light up. Okay, I'm going to let that dry now. That looks a lot darker than the first set did. Okay, so I was over there thinking about, while I was cleaning my, my bottle, I was thinking about what I was going to do to the back side of this one that's got the black on it, because I was worried about having enough to test, but I don't think I have to worry about penetration. The black soaked all the way through. So what that means is I'm not going to touch more than that. It's, uh, it's wavy as all hell, so that's probably not a great test. It's warped like crazy, just because it's wet on one side. But So what that means is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sand that one back as is. That's as far as that one gets to be. I've got one more uh, testy spot, and I think I would like to try just... Um, Just, uh, well, where's my reference thing? I'd like to try one that's got a little bit of a hint of blue, of reddishness to it. I'm thinking we're going to try some brown mahogany and just lay it on pretty thick. So we're going to do an ounce of that here real quick. The other one I want to try is, let's see what um, something without reddishness in it. This dark walnut doesn't really look very red, or very brown for that matter. It's like a, it's kind of a blackish color to me, honestly. So what I'm going to try is I'll throw some of that on the back side of this brown here. that one. I like that brown. That's a pretty cool brown. That one almost looks blackish. It's a dark brown. So I like that. We'll try that now. Okay. I'm going to go clean off brushes, clean out bins and whatnot, 
and then we'll get ready to start sanding back some of these guys. All right, so that's the black. I think I'm done sanding that off. It left a lot. It penetrated a lot better this time, but it also left a good bit of it behind, so I think we're going to end up darkening further than I'd like to. Uh, but this is experiments, so yeah, you can see the other side where it's soaked through. Um, but this is an experiment, so we're going to see if this is an acceptable amount or if I should do more sanding or, you know, we're going to give this, give this a nice shot and see what happens with that. I'll put some red on there. Um, the next one up is one of the browns. All right, that is the walnut brown, I think it was called, the dark walnut brown, we called it. Yeah, that's this, that's this right here. So that one is a bit darker. Now we'll do this side. It's all, it's all dingy. It's all dingy. But now we'll do, this is the, the red mahogany, the mahogany, what they call this? They're called brown mahogany. That's that one there. And we'll do that one next. All right, that was the brown mahogany. And now, just so I don't forget, I've gone and put an A, a B, I'm marking these so I remember which is what. So that's black, dark mahogany, or sorry, dark walnut, and brown mahogany. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to get these set up for some color coats for some red next. And it's time to mix up some red, and this time we're doing about five ounces of it. So we're gonna take my magic formula here. I'm gonna use, I'm changing up, I'm not using the airbrush now because it's gonna, I need to cover a lot more ground and um, this will potentially be the gun I'm gonna use for it anyways when I do the guitar. So I'm planning to just, you know, as I'm experimenting on laying stuff down, now that my surface area is increasing, I'm gonna start trying the different tools that I have. If this doesn't work out, I have a, I have a gravity feed and I've also got a great big HVLP, but I've, um, constantly been impressed and surprised by the critter um, if you've never seen it <clears throat> it's a handy little dandy gun it's just a mason jar with a siphon tube and an air i mean the only adjustment is how far into the airstream the siphon tube goes and if pressure there's no other adjustments and for some that's a bad thing for me i'm i like something simple it's super easy to clean um, and while it's only got a round pattern which might be a problem for some I've kind of gotten used to it I used it to spray the shellac on uh, uh, no I used it to spray the poly on my coffee table I used it to spray I did use it to spray some shellac on something I forget what now but I've used it a fair bit <clears throat> and I'm always surprised at the predictability, the, the ability to lay down a coat that I have been able to control. I've had trouble with other guns. Maybe I don't have great guns. It's entirely possible. But um, So we're going to mix up. I've got five ounces of the good alcohol here, and we're just going to math up our, our uh, formula. So we can We're ready to make us a mess. All right, I'll bring you back when we're ready, when we're set up for that. And uh, I think we're ready to give this a go. I'm ventilated pretty well. Um, got my respirator, so we're safe. We're gonna we're gonna give this a shot and see how it turned out. I'll spray one and then I'll come back and tell you what I thought. Okay. Well, it lays down. There's a lot more air coming out than than the airbrush does, so I got used to holding the thing a little tighter. Um, this uh, this was the brown, the the mahogany brown, the lighter brown, and I can hardly tell there's any brown to it. But then on the other side, this is the dark walnut, and it's it's really dingy looking. But I'm told you got to wait till there's a top coat, so.
Okay, that last one was random and splattery. I just ran out, so my guess wasn't too far off on how much to make, but oh well. Okay, so that was, I kind of started prioritizing the ones I wanted most. Um, so I'm going to let all this stuff dry. Let some of these fumes die down. And then we'll come back and <clears throat> see see what's what here. Uh, that need they need top coat first because it's hard to judge. Whoa, flinging stuff. Here. They need a top coat because it's really hard to judge um, what they're going to look like in the end. This, for example, is the black, and it's I don't know if you can see it from there, but from here you can see it's it's pretty. I don't know. Up in real life, it's really splotchy. Like you can see these little streaks and stuff in here. But I think I'm going to hold on to my judgment until the top coat's on um, and see what that turns out to look like. And that's what we're going to do next is start putting some, some lacquer on the surface. All right. <clears throat> that was the first coat. It's still kind of muted yet. Um, but I think I have some to go on that I can say are pretty, pretty nice. I like... So far, the leading one is the one that had the mahogany, the brown mahogany on it. <clears throat> that one looked the best so far. The green isn't bad either, though. The blue is interesting, but it's it's too much. It starts looking dingy, but we'll give it another coat. <clears throat> 